dreamers welcome back on my channel in today's video i want to talk to you again about rigging but this time of a character the images you see in front of you are taken from my animal project here i had to create a system that would help me create these scenes where two characters for example dance obviously i'm not 100 satisfied with the result but it's a starting point that will lead me to improve this system that today allows us to animate characters on dreams without drawing every single frame. Watch the video until the end if you are interested in understanding this system. I remind you to write in the comments if you need help or want to learn more about a topic and subscribe. But more precisely, what I'm talking about? <laughs> Rigging a character on dreams? How? Well, I have already made a few tutorials on this subject, which I'll include in the description if you want to dive deeper into the topic, especially how to build a character to rig. Today, we'll do more. Namely, we'll place this figure in a different position than the one you see here and will make a simple animation. Using the Dreams tools on the body parts we can obtain very interesting results and from an animation like this we can get to make much more complex ones, like in this case, where the character is first on the car and then quickly gets out running to take cover from the bullets. This is a very complex animation, but the secret lies in what we see today and that is how to place a character drawn on Procreate in a frontal way with a different viewing angle. But here we are on Dreams where I transferred the character in question by creating a doll system through the use of groups and anchor points placed in the joints. Two groups separated by the upper part of the body that make up the legs. Here in a single group there is precisely the upper part of the body. This basic system must necessarily be created, especially for the most mobile parts of the body, such as arms and legs. And let's say that grouping the elements of the arm, for example, can serve as a sort of hierarchy where the main group rotates everything, and within it the single shape of the forearm rotates on the elbow. Obviously, this starting point allows us to create animations in a two-dimensional way, but what if I wanted to do something with a different viewing angle? First of all, I need a perspective reference, and usually I help myself with a grid like in this case. With the distort tool, I fix it like this, for example. Having references is essential to create the correct three-dimensionality in our projects, and the grid is perfect and can also be useful to create a more complex scenario like for my latest project. Ok, perfect. Delete this. Let's also remove some opacity. This grid is too green. <laughs> this way I have helped to position the character with a different point of view. The first step will be to place the character in that position, therefore with a different angle of view. To make the work easier, we start by positioning the legs and torso. Let's start with the move and scale tool on the right leg, where I'm going to rotate it slightly. Ok, like this. I flip the left leg, otherwise the foot will be wrong, and rotate. And here everything is easy. Now I have to change the position of the torso because it will give me a more precise idea of how to position the legs. With the distort tool, modify the shape like this. As you can see, the grid helps us a lot. 
Okay, the torso now can really help us better understand how to arrange the legs too. First of all, I resize it, being careful to give the same value to both. 0.8, better. <laughs> okay, no. 0.8, and for this, 0.8, okay. I tighten these vertices a little. Ok, great! I will also use the distortion tool on the legs and more precisely on the calf. This allows me to put them in perspective. Here too the grid serves as a reference. I want the foot to appear to rest on one of the lines. I also move the vertices here. I repeat the operation on the other leg. Try to be precise so that the feet are the same sides. Here we are. Let's go back to the upper body and work on the arms. Here it will be a little easier. First of all, flip right arms and position it here. Rotate a little. Ok. For now I leave it this scale and position the other arm. Here. And ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the head too. <laughs> For now, I'll take it and place it here. For today's exercise, I'm removing the neck and face parts. We only need the face and the hat. I'll arrange the hat like this. Little big, ok. On the face, I use the warp tool and give it a more perspective shape. By going to the center between the vertices, I can move a larger portion of the shape. I used practically all of Dream's tool to get from this position to this. The head a little lower. Ok, here. At this point I can do today's animation, which is to lower the character. But first I need another reference. I'll add a drawing. Uh, with a red color, with uh, one of my favorite brush, Syrup, I mark this part. These will be two important signs because the feet will have to remain anchored to these points. Next step, I directly move the wall character in this way. I will have a reference of how I will have to rotate, for example, legs and arms. A first frame at one second and another at 2 seconds. At this point, resize a little and move down. As you can see, I will have to try to bring the feet into the position of the red signs. Now enter the group. I hide the upper part of the body for the moment. I have to try to make sure that those feet remain fixed on the red signs. I will use both leg rotation and calf distortion, keyframes set to match the downward movement. I start by rotating this one at 2 seconds, enter the group, distort keyframe here, and here I'm going to distort this part, being careful to stay on the red sign. Pay attention to the attack on the knee. Without using rotation with move and scale tool, we can simply create it with shape distortion. I repeat the operation with the right leg too, but here I give it a little more rotation. Like this. Now I can distort this part too.
let's pay attention to the foot which has the same proportion very good what do you think now i can work on the rest of the body i wanted to lower the torso a little more for a more natural movement like this uh, looks uh, he wants to bend down to avoid back pain <laughs> first element I focus on is again the torso I'm going to distort I want to squash the shape down a little let's try like this hmm, not bad but here I tighten it a bit now it looks decapitated I'd say I need to move the head too rotate a bit and position it here for a better viewing angle with the hat I also cover the face a little more already much better now let's move on to the arm in this case I simply move the group that compose it and resize a bit better like this ok maybe I need to move it a bit rotate For the other arm, we do the same thing. For the moment, let's try in this position. And I would say that it already works very well. The character really seems to be getting lower. I just need to adjust the proportions a bit. The upper part of the body, when it's lower, I think it should be a bit smaller. I start by resizing the arms. Obviously, we take the same value for the other arm. I have an iron memory. Let's set. Uh, okay. And this. Hmm, but maybe I have to shrug the shoulders a bit. The arm is fine there, and I move this vertex of the torso here. Now perfect, sounds good. Well dreamers, we have reached the end of another fantastic tutorial. What you have seen is the basis of animations of this kind. Where, for example, I can integrate this system to a walking cycle to make everything seem much more realistic and three dimensional. To get an animation like this, obviously, there is a lot more work, and let me know in the comments if you want to learn it. Write me anything that comes to your mind. If I can help you, I will be very happy. In the meantime, thanks for watching and.